He has risen from the dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We celebrate with great joy the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We wish great joy to you. Thanks for joining us as we gather together. I pray that we can open our hearts in a real way to experience the real love of God, which is victorious over all, and He calls us to His life this day and forever in the light and love and joy of His victory. So that's what we celebrate this day. Thank you for being with us, praying together. Let us pray for each other that the risen Christ may rise in our hearts as we pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We believe that the risen Christ is here to forgive us, to save us, to lift us up in his embrace. Let us open our hearts to his saving action in our lives in this Eucharistic liturgy. Proceeded to speak and said, 
You know what's happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good things and healing those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are all witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive the forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Christ, your life appears, 
then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
and saw a stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. His risen presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, it was with great joy that we are here with you today. And uh, to, to start out this time, just want to ask you a question. What were the first words that the risen Lord gave to uh, post-resurrection, the first people he saw, to his disciples? And probably some of you are saying, peace be with you, but that wasn't really what he gave. The first words he gave were, Ta-da! <laughs> I know, that's bad, but we celebrate. We celebrate that, that Jesus Christ is, is risen from the dead, that he is here with us, and uh, that uh, we, it, it, it's just great what he is doing for us as we're in the middle of this celebration. So, uh, just what Jesus did say, he did say, uh, peace be with you. And what does that mean? It means, I got you. I got this. I got everything, everyone, all the time. And I'm victorious. And in that peace, it just wants to, uh, it, once we know that peace, it just makes us want to dance. Yes, he's risen from the dead. We dance and we dance and we dance because it's a great love for us that he's risen with us and that he's got this. He's got uh, uh, three words that came to mind the other day in prayer. Suffering. He says, I am with you. I am with you in your suffering. I'm, I'm with you to raise you up in your suffering, to make you whole, to, to, to give uh, relief and healing to your suffering. So I don't know what your suffering is. Another big thing is fear. I'm perfect love. My perfect love will cast out all fear. So it's such that nothing will be able, in the end, ever get to you, to assail you, to take you down, to break you down, to take you into darkness, because you'll be forever in the grip of my grace. And then finally, the end. The end. What is the end? What does Jesus say about the end? What does Jesus say about the end of our lives? He says, check, I got that covered too. I got that covered. I got everything that you're facing, uh, the fears, the suffering, uh, the death, I've got that covered in my resurrection glory. Now, I have a little prophet of stone. Uh, what's been going on in the world, obviously, uh, this is one way I think we can put it, is like uh, we, be, we become unplugged. We, be, we become unplugged from what we thought, what we considered was powerful. We become unplugged. Like Jesus, I think, has allowed this to happen, what's going on, so that he uh, has canceled everything so that he can have a word with us. And he wants to show us true power. He wants us to show us resurrection power. He wants to show us what our faith is all about. And you know what's happened during all this time? We've been leveled. The playing field's been leveled. We all see how powerless that we are and how much we are in need of power in our own weakness. And how on this Resurrection Sunday do we get, how, how do we get plugged in plugged into the power, the power of the risen Christ. What I want to talk to you about is suffering 
fear in the end. I want to share suffering that I have uh, in my own life. I want to share that with you. And this is the suffering of wanting to appear to be, uh, to, to basically to look good. I want to preach well. I want to celebrate the Mass reverently. I want people to think of me as holy and loving and joyful. And if I don't do that, then my value is in question. If I don't earn that respect, if I don't earn that love, then am I? That's a suffering that I have in my life and the reason I share it with you because I think so many of us struggle with that suffering. I'm well groomed. I'm, uh, I'm well clothed. I'm well spoken. I have a house. I have a job. I'm respectable. I've got this. And I think what's happening in the world, we're saying and we're seeing, I don't have this. I don't have this power. All this is in so many ways being taken down. In, in the suffering in our lives, the emotional suffering that we have, the relational, maybe it's something that we've done to others, maybe it's something we've done to ourselves, maybe it's the way we've used our bodies or not used them, maybe it's infidelity, maybe it's addiction, maybe it's pornography, maybe it's gossip, but all that we know is that's not from God and of God and what God wants for us. So he sent his son Jesus to be with us. I just have a, a favor for you right now. I'm gonna ask this. Uh, there's one requirement for you to be here now at this mass. And if you don't fulfill that requirement, I'd like you to leave. I'd like you to shut off your, your computer, whatever that is. And the requirement is, is that you would just admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you don't have the power. Admit that you need the power of the risen Christ. Because you know what this church here, you know what this church is full of? Tax collectors and sinners, fornicators and prostitutes, those addicted to drugs and drink, gossips and slanderers, selfish people, unforgiving people, people who are not faithful to God, not faithful to each other, not faithful to themselves in the spirit of the risen Christ. So if that's the case, just shut it off and walk away. But if it's not this time, right here, right now, it's for you and it's for me and it's for us. And we do this together. Amen? We do this together. We are in this together because the evil one who's come to steal, kill, and destroy, he isolates and he destroys. And that's what so, so much happened in, in our world. He isolates and destroys, but what Christ has come is to bring us together. And what the church is about is we do this together. Because he's got us together. He's got us together. He's got us together now. And he's got this. Everyone, everything, for all of time. Whatever it is. He's got this. And he is victorious in it. And he's leading us in heaven's victory. And he's grabbing us by the hand. But we do it together. For always. All the way to heaven. And that's what church is. And I pray to God. I pray to God that times might get tougher, they might get better, but I pray to God that we will continue to come together. And when we are able to come together, I pray to God that the church doors will be run over and run down because everybody will be running here for the power, the power that saves. There is suffering. I hear so much of it, and I feel in my own life the suffering as a priest. What is your suffering? Have you ever brought it to the risen Christ? That's all he wants, not to condemn you, but that you might be healed and live in his name and know the life that does not end. What do you do, like if you have a flower and you put that in darkness, What's going to happen to that flower? Exactly. It's going to die. What if you have the flower of God's children, his sons and daughters, all the flowers of God's children, put that in the darkness? We know what happens. It dies. And that's not Jesus. And that's not his intention. And that's not resurrection. Please, in this time, we're going to even have a chance in this time 
to come to the risen Christ, to come for healing. There is no sorrow on earth that heaven can't heal. No sorrow on earth that heaven can't. Jesus has been there, he's done that, he's embraced that in the cross, just waiting for you. He's waiting for you to dare to pray. Fears. What about our fears? There's so many fears going on. Fear of money, of loss of money, loss, loss of job. Fear of uh, just what's going to go on in the future. Fear, so many fears. And uh, what, are we, what are we doing uh, in, the, in the midst of our fears? How are we handling that? Fear of loss of health. And fear ultimately of what the corona, this unseen assassin, will do to us. All these fears. Fears for food, right? Where's the pasta in the stores? Toilet paper. All these different kind of fears from all the way up from toilet paper on. And we know in the presence of the risen Christ, his perfect love casts out all fear. He says, I got you. And someday, I will have you, and nothing will assail you. Nothing will take you down. There will be no more crying or pain or tears or death or separation because you will be in my presence. And then, what about the end? What will happen? Well, for us in our faith, we know that the end, that day when we die, God will call us home to his everlasting glory, and it will be on all imagining. And that's what the risen Christ has for us, wants to communicate to us. So the, the worst possible thing that can happen for the world is what the Christian considers, in the end, the best possible thing, that we can be with the Lord in heaven, in his perfect life, that life that we're created for, the fullness of life in Christ. So how do we plug in to this power? I'd like to recommend three words to you. I hope you can take with you in your heart, for you personally, and for everybody you meet all the day long, the rest of your life, everyone you meet. And I would like to call it, dare a prayer. Dare a prayer. Have you ever made an open, trusting prayer to Jesus in your powerlessness? Because I know when I did that in my life, I met the risen Christ, and I'm changed forever, and he is saving me, and I can trust that he is true to give me fullness of life. The risen Christ is with me, and he's got me. He's got me no matter what. Come hell or high water, he's got me. Good times and bad, sickness and health, he's got me. Coronavirus or not, he's got me. Job or not, he's got me. Loss, he's got me. Fear, suffering, he's got me. He's got you, he's got us together. So when I was in college, I went to a prayer meeting because I was opening my life to this risen Christ. And I just want to say this. I don't know where you're at with, with Jesus and the experience of Jesus, but he just wants to show you his love and that he's got an incredible plan for your life and that there is a future and it's full, full of hope. So, I want to say that the more you seek him, the more you will find him. And the more you find him, the more joyful and loving and powerful your life will be. Power, that is power uh, greater than the power of death or anything that comes across you. Because Jesus Christ is rising in us. Even in this dying, he's rising in the midst of this to lift us up to the power and the eternity of his love, and nothing can stop that. You know, we had technical difficulties at the beginning of our service. The, the power went out, we didn't have Wi-Fi. But Jesus Christ is alive and he's risen, and he wants to communicate, and we know who that was, right? We know who that was, trying to take him away from us, but we're here now, he's rising in our midst. So I went to this prayer meeting, and the, the deacon who was, talking at the meeting, he said, you know, there's suffering in, in our world, people are going through stuff, so when people are going through stuff, we can react to it in different ways. We can say, 
like we read from St. James, we can say, oh, I'm sorry about that, keep warm and well fed, and not lift a finger to help those people. Or another thing we can do when people are sharing with us pain and suffering of their own lives, we can say, oh, uh, I'm sorry, that's too bad. Or another option is, I'll go pray for you, I'll go down to the church and pray for you. And let me assure you, I have nothing against prayer, the power of prayer. But he said, why don't you, when somebody shares something with you, say, may I pray with you? I believe in a God who cares. And may I pray with you. So, he said, you're going to get an opportunity every day this next week to do that, do that. So I was in the summer, and I was... I worked my way through college, and grad school, and high school, painting houses. So I was painting a house. I was by myself at that point in a company in Sublimity, Oregon. Amsbury Brothers house painting, and I was by myself. And I was painting on this house. The, the, the owners were not at home during this time. So I said, I'm not going to see anybody. I'm not going to pray with anybody. I'm just going to work, and I'll go home, and I'm with mom and dad. And that's how it goes, and that's how my days are going as I work on this project. So I was working on this house and I was spraying some trim, I remember, a nice summer day, some lemony Oregon, and uh, I uh, was spraying along and then all of a sudden this car drove up and a man got out of the car. He must have been in his 70s. He says, uh, hey, what are you doing? And I'm thinking, what do you think I'm doing? I'm painting the house, I'm, I'm spraying trim. And so the, the guy kind of continued to talk to me and I was getting mad because when I work, I want to work and I'm going to get it done, don't get in my way. But then the guy continued to talk to me and the Holy Spirit started to talk to me and said, get off your ladder. Give this man some respect. So uh, finally going back with the forth with the Holy Spirit, finally got off the ladder and I got down face to face. You know what reconciliation means? It means eyelash to eyelash. We need so much more of that in our hurting world because that's where Jesus comes. When we can be his eyes and his face and his love to others. So I looked at this man and he pointed over at the Marion home. It was just across the street. And the Marion home's a, a care facility. He said, yeah, my, my wife is in this care facility and he started breaking down. He said, we've been married 52 years and uh, she doesn't know my name anymore. And he goes, I, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. It's like over $3,000 a month and I don't have the money to pay for her. So do you see the, the suffering of this man? Fear of being able to take care of his wife and the suffering of his wife not even knowing him after 52 years of marriage. So I finally looked at him and I said, Sir, this is difficult, but I know that we have a God who cares. May I say a prayer with you? He bent over his head and began to weep. And I said a prayer, reaching out to the Lord for this man and his wife and all his needs. He got done and through his tears, he said, thank you. He said, son, with that attitude, you'll go a long way in life. That was the power of the risen Jesus. Then, we have the power of the risen Jesus now. But will you dare a prayer with people? Because for me, it's the difference between really nothing and just offering our, our little pithy, unpowerful wisdom. And when we pray, the King, Jesus brings the kingdom of God and the hope of heaven and the power everlasting when we will pray with people. And how many opportunities do you get each day and every day to do that? Countless. Do we believe in the risen Jesus? And we dare a prayer to invite him into our presence to change our lives forever. To know that he's bigger than it all. All the fears, all the suffering, 
and that the end is just the beginning. And that's what we celebrate as we celebrate that Jesus is risen in our presence now. The rest of the story. So my mom and dad, they both got Alzheimer's and they didn't remember us kids and family at the end. And they, my daddy, he, uh, they both lived in the Marion home across that street. And so that's where they spent a lot of their, their last days, uh, especially my father, his last days of his life. And he had Alzheimer's and at one point we had to put him in a lockdown facility because he was Roman. He was a Roman Catholic. <laughs> he was roaming around the streets of sublimity. It wasn't safe. And one time one of my brothers went in to, to his room and my dad was there. He had his hands up in the air. He had his hands up in the air and he was grabbing. He goes, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me it was this good? And he was seeing, I believe, that the veil was being torn back and he was seeing heaven. Why didn't you tell me it was this good? I want to go. I want to go. And that's what this is all about. That it's so good. No matter how good it is here, it's nothing. It pales in comparison to the glory, the unadulterated glory of Jesus Christ, His pure presence and His glory that He has for all of His children. And this is why we celebrate. This is why we dance this day. This is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is risen indeed. And that's why we dance. So what I'd like to do now is I pray. St. Augustine said, we are Easter people and Alleluia is our song. What does Alleluia mean? It means praise the Lord. That's what church is about. That is a, it's about the power of Christ coming to us and saving us from all of our fears and all of our suffering and knowing that the end is just the beginning. That's what we celebrate this day. So, what I'd like to do with you now is to dare a prayer. Will you? Will you do that with me? You know, we can talk all this high fluid stuff and all this great theology, but and that's that's okay, but can you just like make an open, humble prayer and, and surrender yourself to the risen Jesus? I know there's hurts and sufferings and pains. I know you don't have it together, neither do I. I know we're broken. But I know Jesus is right here, right now, in this time, in his present risenness for you. To make that prayer for you, to, to be with each other right now, look at each other face to face and make that prayer. And then to be able to share that prayer as we, we go forward. So let us turn in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you now as we are. We come to you with our pain, our suffering, our fear, our confusions, our questions. We come to you powerless. Jesus, we invite you into our powerlessness, to our fears. Jesus, fill us with your love. Fill us with your resurrection power that we may know that you have got us and you have everything and you will heal us and you will bind us up and you will raise us up and that we will live with you and that we will know your love. Jesus, we just pray for the experience of your love right now. Change us. We come running to you, and we believe and trust in your goodness, your love, your forgiveness, your mercy, your power to save. And Jesus, help us to know this. And from here on out in our lives, to pray with people, to bring you to people that we will dare our prayer. Help us never to leave people hanging 
in their suffering, in their fears, but to bring you through prayer. Jesus, I don't know if that was a real man that you sent to me that day to pray with him on the paint job, or if that was an angel, but either way, you taught me a lesson. And I think you taught me that lesson to teach many others that lesson, that we would dare a prayer. We would dare a prayer to pray to you, to open our hearts to you, so that this would be much more than just words or a ritual, but it would be a relationship with you, which you want with us, because that's what we're saved in, is a relationship with you. So we pray for your love and your relationship and the power that has defeated every power. We trust in you. You have won the battle. And we pray to be raised up in you this day and forever. And I pray for you, my brothers and sisters, my fellow brothers and sisters on this journey, that God in Jesus Christ will, will bless you this day and forever in his resurrection power, his joy, his life, his purpose. And bless you with a desire to pray and share that with everyone we know. Because we know, Jesus, you, you, you've got us. You've got it all covered, everyone, all the time, forever. And we love you and we praise you for this. And so I pray that God, in his love and his power, bless all of you this day and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. He is victorious. Alleluia. 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 Turning to God, our Father, who sent the Son, Jesus, to fill us with his power of everlasting life, we pray. He is risen. We are an Easter people, and alleluia is his song. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the joy of the resurrection renew our lives and the whole world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we dare a prayer all the day long, every day of our lives, we pray. 
pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. To know that any power in our lives is given from above, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that our family altars will alter our families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Protect and guide all who are serving on the front lines as we pray for a cure soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, inspire us with new and creative ways to love our neighbors with the power of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they rise in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you know us through and through, you love us through and through. We pray that you would hear these and all our requests and all our prayers, our need for your son's saving power, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Every land, every people, exalts in your praise, 
and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. St. 
Charles Borromeo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through, with, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Celebrate, he's risen. 